For years now I've been aware of this image, a famous shot looking west towards Stonehenge. In the foreground a calf and AA roadside phone box, a sign telling us to fork left for Exeter and a house. There was something about this image that I found really curious and led me to make this video. You see, every time I researched the house and I looked at the old maps, whatever era of map I were to look at, well, the house simply wasn't there. So was this image some kind of hoax, some kind of photo manipulation to put in all sorts of quirky bits from a different era? If it was actually real, well, who lived in that house? And above all for me, why was it never mapped? I even thought it would be a good idea to replicate the shot, lining it up perfectly with the horizon against the stones, but that would mean either crossing the A303 or a long drive around to the south side and then a mile walk. Okay, fine, I'll, I'll use Google Maps or something. Okay, so let's assume that photo isn't photoshopped or manipulated in any way. Join me today as I'm walking towards the site of those houses. And let's see if we can unravel this mystery as we go. Let's see if we can date it using some of the other features and things in that photo. Okay, so first up, the AA phone box. Now the AA themselves give a few details, including locations, a really good database. They state an end date of 1960 for production, and they even list them all. It looks like ours is number 514, but what about the start date for these boxes? So those AA boxes started to be used around about the early 1920s, but that was more of a trial. They weren't properly used until the 1930s when members were given keys to get in the boxes. So that's a start date, let's say 1930, and they went out of use around 1960. So we have a 30 year gap. Kings Barrow, one of a few that we might see on our way to Stonehenge today. Beautiful and beautiful old trees as well that surround it. So we've got a 30 year period. Let's see if we can narrow that down with some of the other features on the map. So what about the car? Will that perhaps help us narrow this down? So I scoured the internet. Now I am no car buff and I asked the lovely people on Twitter or X what they thought. Now my uneducated head went somewhere between 1920 and 1950-ish. Okay, so I wasn't quite right. That isn't King's Barrow. This is King's Barrow, old King's Barrow. Now after some extensive searching, Wikipedia had that car down as a Vauxhall Light 6 or a version of. Now the manufacture date for that is 1933 to 1938. So we can narrow that 30 year period down to 27 years. We can't really have an end date. That said, it does look very new. So maybe we could give it a 10 year lifespan. We've narrowed our date down a little bit more. So the sign. Well, the sign tells us the way to Exeter and the fact that it does that and it isn't covered up means it's probably pre-war. So that being the case and the assumption the car is in its early years, well, could we well have a date range of 1933 to 1938? Okay, so everything fits in that date range so far. There's no outliers. This is good. What's next? Let's have a look at the building on the right of the houses. Now we note there seems to be a fairly big car park, certainly by the era, the 1930s. So we assume it's some kind of amenity. And lo and behold, after a bit of digging, Indeed, there is talk of a Stonehenge cafe at that site. In fact, one such article suggests that in 1927 materials were being purchased for the construction of a cafe 360 metres away from Stonehenge. Perfect. This fits with all the dates and tells us the year of construction. Another article tells us of a rather sad tale about this cafe ran at the time by the Office of Works, which turned into the Ministry of Works. Well, this cafe was described by the people that ran it as a cheap and flashy little building which vulgarises unspeakably this world famous and most impressive monument. I've only ever walked this route once before and it's just it's quiet and it's littered with history. I can see Stonehenge over there on the horizon, long barrows surrounding me, a whole bunch more. 
coming up in a big row there and beyond those there's a whole load of uh, clumps of trees I think they were planted 200 years ago to mark the Battle of the Nile or the Nile clumps or something and they're all positioned in the uh, the way um, that the, the, the battle took place or something like that can't remember the story So the article I read on the cafe suggested it was demolished in 1938 along with the house. Wait, the house? Demolished in 1938, but we know nothing else about the house other than now its demolished date. I guess that means we can narrow the picture down to 1933 to 1938. But if we want to find out more about the house, I guess we have to do some more digging and perhaps refer to some friends on social media. Now after much searching and some help from Paul Clifton at the BBC, we have a lady called Jean. Now we need to go back to the Office of Works here because it turns out between 1934 and 1938 they employed a man to be the custodian of the stones. Cut the grass, uh, keep the place generally tidy, an all round maintenance job. Jean moved there with the family when she was just five and her father was indeed the custodian of Stonehenge, the custodian's cottages. There was just my mother and father and my brother and myself. There were no neighbours. Life there must have been pretty bare. No water, no electricity, no amenities like refuse collection. In fact, her father used to shoot rabbits from around the place and uh, that was their uh, regular dinner. The stones were Jean's playground. Parents didn't have a lot of money. There was bare floorboards, not polished shiny boards like today. And then you went out the back door and up through the garden and through the hedge. I don't know if the hedge is still there or if that's been moved. So the house was so short lived it was probably never mapped regularly. And of course, we still don't know its construction date. But what we do know is two years before those houses were demolished, two more houses were built just behind the camera up on the hill. And they were built in 1936 and they're still there today and they're called the Custodian Cottages. Now I know I cover a lot of topics on this channel but if you like this particular landscape well you can go and check out a video we did here on the, uh, the original location that the big megalith stones came from from Stonehenge not the little ones from Wales the 50 tonne big ones. In the meantime, see you this time next week.